The paintings I did for the After Richmond exhibition fell into three groups. This painting is the first in the group I called Richmond paintings because they drew directly on images from the film and on emotional responses to them. Back in October 2016, Mike, Colin and I had already realised that the film wasn't really a visual documentary anymore. It was an artwork of some sort. On the computer, I did screen grabs of individual frames I thought I could use as source material. The composition is a montage of image fragments taken from these. I took whatever caught my eye and pasted it into Photoshop until I felt I had enough to play with. And that is the key to the method of composition. Play. I don't impose ideas when I work like this. I don't have a message or a story or anything like that in mind. I just open myself up to whatever might emerge out of playing with the material to hand. I arrived at the composition very quickly and resisted the temptation to tinker with it. I squared up the canvas and penciled outlines. From then on the painting was all done by hand in acrylics. Its character comes from four main factors. First, juxtaposition of differently scaled elements. This hints at narrative without easily resolving into anything continuous. Second, weird spatial anomalies. These arise at the ambiguous boundaries of image fragments where there is either a change of scale or texture, or simply a lack of detail. Next, colour palette. This overrides figurative and spatial discontinuities by introducing a consistent range of contrasts and harmonies of tone and hue to pull the picture together. And finally, what I call force field. This is the underlying dynamic of line and movement that provides a sense of structure to a painting. It emerges in my work. It is not a predetermined idea of design, such as one often sees worked out in artists' preliminary sketches. There is no correct reading of a painting like this, but there is one little chain of ideas you might find useful. In the top right-hand corner of Richmond painting number one, The south side of the station bridge merges into the marketplace where three rather indistinct figures stand together staring towards the viewer. This moment is captured about 39 seconds into the film. It is a kind of datum point from which radiates the whole spirit of the project and is rightly highlighted in the first part of Mike's Richmond poem, which was the centrepiece of the exhibition. Centre right of the painting, the giant policeman bearing down on two pairs of innocent shoppers is rather weird. In reality, the Richmond of Mike and I's youth was lightly policed, especially taking into account the influx of young soldiers on Friday and Saturday nights from Catrick Camp. In retrospect, maybe I confirmed this element of the painting because it doubled the idea of surveillance. Those three figures in the marketplace are also staring at the back of the policeman's head. But as I say, this is just the beginning of one way to read the painting. Many others are possible and equally legitimate.